we have a right to lie, but not about the heart of things. Why fictionalize something made from the soul's ineradicable essence, which is like the complaint of reality? Antonio Facts. Major depressive disorder is also known as major depression, clinical depression, or unipolar depression. Signs and symptoms include persistent sad, anxious, or empty feelings, feelings of hopelessness or pessimism, feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or helplessness, irritability, restlessness, loss of interest in activities or hobbies once pleasurable, including sex, fatigue and decreased energy, difficulty concentrating, remembering details, making decisions, insomnia, early morning wakefulness, excessive sleeping, overeating, appetite loss, Thoughts of suicide, suicide attempts, aches, pains, headaches, cramps, digestive problems. Depression is caused by a combination of genetic, biological, environmental, and psychological factors. There's no single cause, even in individual cases. One potential biological cause is an imbalance of the neurotransmitters serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. It is unknown whether the neurotransmitter imbalance causes the depression, or whether the depression causes the imbalance. Behaviorally stressors in the form of social isolation or early life deprivation may lead to permanent changes in brain function that increase susceptibility to depressive symptoms. Women are 70% more likely to experience depression in their lifetime. Patients with depression typically show a range of cognitive distortions and alterations in thinking style. Of particular relevance is the tendency of some patients to ruminate, defined as a repetitive focusing on oneself and the nature and implications of negative feelings. Maladaptive rumination includes the recall of miserable autobiographical memories, mind wandering, and lower levels of adaptive self-reflection. Treatments rarely work in isolation, thus the best results are in combinations of cognitive behavioral therapy, antidepressant medication, or the more stigmatized electroconvulsive therapy. There is a high rate of relapse when treatments are discontinued. Untreated depression often has an accelerating course, in which episodes become more frequent and severe over time. Hypothesis. When in a period of depression, it becomes impossible to separate objective and subjective viewpoints, ideas. One can know the facts, one can know the impressions, of third parties, these do not matter. When one is immersed, one is locked in subjectivity. This thing, this depression, is not impermeable. I am convinced it has facets, elements to be analyzed, substructures. If I can understand the composition of this thing, if I to finally find its form and make its subjectivity into something with a form, if I can make it tangible, relatable, if I can share it, then it is real. Then it can be faced. And I may maintain my mind like an intricate machine, balancing the elements that, unchecked, lead to utter debilitation. If I could see this for what it is, if I could assemble it, I try to see its facets, the habits that prey on my mind, but when I look, they turn. They smother and blind me and disappear. I search for them, I see them in the corners of my vision, little pinpoints in my sight. I frantically follow, but they are always a dash ahead. They change costume. I pin them down. Live things, butterflies, they still squirm. I can examine them. They become still. They are dry and relieved of mystery. They change color. Have I learned? Grown? Or have they tricked me? I fear they've changed costume again. They have left their form behind and become entirely different beasts preying on my mind once again. Infinite adaptability. Depression is a chameleon that pushes me to become, to want more, to not settle. One day, 
the next, then it is stolen. What was once destroying me is now my saving grace, and repeat, it is all inseparable for me, and is connected head to tail, there is no end. Depression becomes self, self-depression. There is no perforated edge, no break, but a smooth connection. I try to externalize its facets, but they bleed back into the eyes that peer at them, nothing more than a temporarily extracted organ. The connection never severed. As if I am locked in my form. My eyes are open, I am not tired. I am lying down, but I cannot lift my limbs. They're heavy with what? My voice echoes and rattles in the vessel of my body. I vibrate with the syllables of revolt because I will not take this lying down. I will put up a fight, no matter if this will simply pass or not. Because if it didn't, if it didn't, and if each time I am suspended longer and longer in empty space, empty space where there is no sound, there are too few particles to carry, it's nothing to bump into or anything to communicate. Not feeling. How can you claim to feel nothing when you yourself say that you are terrified and frustrated? Those are feelings. Oh, but we're not in the realm of logic. There's nothing inside of me. Outer space has somehow invaded my inner space, leaked in, or my particles leaked out, out, into friends, into building life, into family, into studies, into perfectionism, and now, all of my atoms are gone but for this thin shell. And so when I experience terror in the bit of me that there is in my mind, it has nowhere to go. It's not accompanied by a physical feeling and slips away. Only to echo back. I am locked in this brittle and leaden shell. Begins at a small point in my chest and leaks out. It is dark and unidentifiable in color, but it is strong. An inward force pulling me into myself, a constant cycle regurgitation. Be careful, because I only become stronger. Now, pulling in the chair, the scarf, the book, my innocent bystander, spreading like a disease. Who knew the spread of negativity approaches the speed of light? I fear my effect. I look at it in disgust. It is both my monster and myself in attempts to find where I begin and it ends. I come up empty-handed. It is beyond my control, spinning rapidly, only gaining, gaining. I fear my effect. Because it is draining to hold someone together, determined to fall apart. Going over and over, I will hold you, I will support you, tell me. But no one deserves to be sacrificed to my disease. No one can hold out. It is mine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay. What can I do? I feel nothing, empty. How long has it been since I've written? I'm fine, I'm fine, it's okay. What can I do? I feel nothing, empty. How long has it been since I've written? I'm fine, I'm fine, it's okay. What can I do? I feel nothing, empty. How long has it been since I've written? I'm fine, 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 until the words become something entirely different, something entirely their own, until they sprout legs and utter little I'm fines of their own. I have 
been thinking in circles, uttering the same things for years. And each time the frustration and self-hate grows because I cannot produce anything but this. I cannot break out. I have gotten lost. And I'm tired of the story of this tale, hoping for a revelation that never comes. Because spouting out the same, same, or remaining locked down, what does that do? I seal tight, I fling out words, I spin in circles, take this, take this, take this. Why is this not working? Where am I getting? I'm standing in place and have not opened my senses to hear answers, responses, inspirations. I trudge through the same ideas. They stick to the bottoms of my shoes. But it's fine. Habits. Emotion that utterly absorbs you, beginning without thought unconsciously, gradually wasting all potential energy. I fidget with my physical form, scrape, pick, chip away at the pieces of myself, my frustrated body as it tries to heal itself, and I pull it back again and again. But don't mistake this for metaphor and it's destruction. The problem here, the objective, is not physical harm is not disintegration of self. The nature of the habit is pleasure. It feels good, it commands all of my attention, sedates me. In these little motions, my energy dwindles away, gesture by gesture, over and over and over again. My posture collapses, my mind vague, blurry, and I am gone, sedated. Anesthetized. I cannot create. My hands are occupied. I cannot think. My mind has drifted away. Staring for hours at room, wall, floor, but I do not see anything in this half state. I cease to exist. While still breathing, while still making vague little motions. Motion without advancement. Motion that roots me in place. Suspend and collapse. You tell us to, to reach, reach for something, to wish for it, to place all of your attention on it, and to collapse. It's a balance of energies, you see, equal and opposite reactions. The snap back, you can only lunge so far before you can resist no more, and are back in place again. Or lower. Now, I am on the ground, and my eyes are on the ground, and so are my palms, and my palms don't feel the support of the earth, but it's hypnotic gravitational pull. They are heavy, they are blue. Amazing how the snapback of the journey down can shatter and fix your vision. Let's return to the suspend, to the reach. It is grace, energy uplifting, not a a quivering, strenuous reach for one entirely natural. This is the one. This is the time it is going to work. This time it is ordained by, by God or the science or energy or me. All around is light, and I can see even down from where I came. I see the last days or, or weeks or months, and I smile. I laugh and I shake my head at the poor me who had dragged along that bottom. I turn my head and focus on my ascent. Maybe it's a new job, a new flirtation, a new cafe, 
good weather, spirituality, a new plan, a getaway plan, it has manifested itself in 1,000 forms, in forms of shifted furniture in change. As long as there is change, then I can say, quote, then I can breathe, I can wrap myself in now. But what do I buy? A week? A month? Six months? These temporary fixes, these false liberations. Who can bear to stand by when each liberation is merely a prelude to another descent? Time after time, energy slowly gets lost. The will to fight back leaks away. There was supposed to be relief in collapse. It was supposed to be relaxation, a sigh, pause, not cessation. Solution. If I could place all of my energy in outward action, all away, turn my brain inside out so there's nothing inside anymore, all of my organs expelled, reaching in every direction or reaching in one direction, perhaps there is a physical task that could solve this. Perhaps there's one physical action that could absorb all of my negative energy and cleanse me. Is it then locked? in this outward action, or does it come back through the air, following the worn path or by intuition? Am I free? Does it simply regenerate? Am I the source? Do I infect others or only myself? Will I forever need to do to create in order to cleanse myself, a never-ending cycle? Are there periods of rest? Or will I run continuously? Will it exhaust me? Will it incite me to create a generator of work, of outward impressions? In school, I was taught to do the doing. I was taught to empty my brain or to ignore it and to place all of myself behind a nearly impossible task. Does this solve anything? What is a solution? How long does it last? Is it permanent? No. No, it's, it's temporary, like anything else. So what is redeemable in a solution? It buys time, but every time, just a bit of time. Where do I place my focus? Because if I expand and look down on all of this from above, then what? Then it all slips away and becomes futile, a pile of little actions ending in nothing. So no, that helps nothing. In we go. Microscope, the little actions. We live for every solution. We have no choice. Is this choice of perspective or nothingness? So train your mind to focus and work your ass off and make meaning happen because it does not occur spontaneously. It is a choice that we make. It's the action then. That becomes the meaning. And yes, it is an escape. A solution is an escape. And now, I become the master of my universe with the players in the palm of my hand, arranging them as I see fit and shake them up for change because I might as well, because what else is there to do? My action is my life. Place 100% belief in it because there will always be something to criticize. There will always be fault because everything around us is created by us. Nothing is legitimate. It is not created by something true or infallible, but by us. So now I create with the same sense of authority. Do the doing. Place yourself entirely behind the action, for there is nothing else. Your greatest purpose and escape is creation. Conclusion. The subject in depression despises and clings to her illness, attributing her growth and vitality to it. It is ingrained and inseparable from her identity. Its absence would be her absence, a life without thought. 
The subject must assimilate the elements of depression into herself, fusing the forms, the strength of two forms. She must use it. Causes, causes, looking at the beginnings has brought us no further, so we are here and we must move forward with what we are given. Depression is the hand, so play. Roll it between your fingers to feel its form and push onward, not allowing it to limit you, define you. The facts have been stated and they have given no respite. We must use it. Thus, something that transcends your suffering, your very existence, raising you up, strengthening you, and bringing you the only reality man can reasonably hope to achieve by his own means. Reality in others. <laughs>